Now, Larry Nichols is is former Green Beret, special ops, uh, working for the CIA, you name it, obviously. He's not supposed to get into all that. And then uh, went to basically uh, interface with the Dixie Mafia that runs the South. Uh, the, the Dixie Mafia is the shadow government. It's mainly Democrats. Democrats here in town are Dixie Mafia. But, uh, you know, they run the show. And then when uh, the Clintons started killing kids and stuff, he said, look, I'm not going to be part of killing 13-year-old kids to see drug shipments. I'm just, we're not doing it. There's no reason to kill those kids. And so he went out against them, and the rest is history. Uh, and most folks don't know who he is because it's been 20 years since the whole Clinton thing. It's good that Trump's bringing all this back up. And Nichols told us here on the show, what, what day was Nichols on? He, he told us last week that this would be coming out in the next two weeks. Well, it has come out. Trump in the Washington Post, everywhere else, saying, hey, Vince Foster, very mysterious, and he's being investigated. He's talking about the rapes, all of it that's happening. And Nichols says more is about to come out. Here to drop that bombshell is Larry Nichols, a man who has incredible courage. And he took photos of the black government SUV pulling up in his yard, pulling out in the rural area. And then the cops came and told him, what are they doing? And they said, we're feds, Homeland Security. You can't get, you know, get out of here. They wanted our viewers, and everybody else to know, we're on you. When we were talking about the Supreme Court Justice, Scalia. I mean, this is a very serious time, folks. The enemy's moving. Censorship is moving. I've never seen such movement, and it, 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 it gives me uh, goosebumps. But not a fear. I'm actually just exhilarated, though. I mean, I feel like the fight's here now. I, I feel crazed, quite frankly. Uh, God bless you, my friend. I hope you're doing okay. I know you can't even be on uh, video Skype with us, but uh, we're, we're, we're praying for you. Uh, Nichols Live at AOL.com. Uh, is your PayPal. Folks, need to support you. I know you're battling cancer, my friend. And, uh, but we'll talk about that at the end of the interview. Thank you, Mr. Nichols, for coming on. You bet, Alex. And thank you, buddy. And, and let me say, I know we need to talk about Foster, but folks, you better be prepared. You better be prepared because we are at the beginning of the beginning of the end <clears throat> of this silent coup. Alex, it's now or never. We're going to come out of this either the nation we were or the nation we never wanted to be, but it's now and it's on us. And people have got to use you. I hate to say it that way, but they've got to use InfoWars as a medium. You know, I respect more than you can know because, you know, I understand the little talk show world, but I respect you for bringing people from other media sources in without being jealous. You know, folks, this is no time for everybody to divide up and this group go their way, this group. Look, this we've got to communicate and get the word out. And I would tell everybody, get on Alex's email list. You will learn very soon why that's important. You will learn. It's coming. I'm sorry, Alex, I didn't mean to blurt in. You've got the floor. I mean, uh, let's get into all of it. Well, all right, let's get into all of it. Let me tell you something. You see today, Trump brings out Vince Foster. And here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Here they go. Anybody that believes Vince Foster's death was suspicious is a nutcase. Well, folks, let me tell you about that. Once Hillary clears the Democratic nomination, then about every week, Alex, I will be right here with you if you will allow me to. And I will share stuff that nobody has known over these 20 years plus about the death of Vince Foster. Well, please don't wait. Let's start doing it right now because I don't want a hit squad coming down here. I well, mean. then let's start with the first thing that ought to make this a bit suspicious. The official story of Foster's death is that he parked his car at Fort Marcy Park, walked some 200 yards in, in the hot sun on a dirt trail, went to a berm by a cannon, Civil War cannon, sat down and shot himself in the mouth and blew the crown of his skull off. Well, that's the official story. However, Alex has, and I think you're going to put it on the screen, something I came up with, which was the actual Secret Service memo. Now, folks, this is in the House. This is in congressional records. This is there. So when you start talking about us being nutcakes, let's deal with this piece of information right here. When the, when the park police notified the Secret Service at the White House of the death of Vincent Foster, 
This is the actual memo they gave them. Now, what is significant about this memo is it says the body of Vincent Foster was found in his car in the parking lot at Fort Marcy Park. And it went on to describe six-pack bottle of James was in the front seat with him. One he had drank, the others had not been opened yet. It mentioned the fact that the 38 revolver was there in the car with him. It mentioned the fact that the magic briefcase was in the back seat and it was empty. I say the magic briefcase because there it was in the back seat empty. Three days later, it was supposedly found in his office when they investigated his office and they inspected it. It was empty. And then guess what? We raised so much cane. You'll remember, Alex, you and I and others about the fact that there was no suicide note that three or four days after that, in comes Hillary's people into Foster's office. They refined the briefcase, simply turn it upside down and out falls the torn up suicide note. So yeah, let's start there. When you want to discredit this story as being over, and anybody that has question about it, uh, your nutcases, right? Well, let's start there. Right out of the chute, did he die on the bomb by the cannon, or did he die in his car? Now, Alex, I don't know about you, but I don't believe that's a typo. You know, I could understand with all the... We've got him lines. cleaning his office out and the, all of it. I mean, a lot of folks know the story. A lot of our audience is informed. For me, and I want to go back over it, you said this was coming out in the next few weeks. You were correct. I know you have a lot of sources. What else is coming out and what do you think of Trump? I mean, he's got more and more courage. I got to tell you, I really admire him. Well, he does. What I worry is Trump, I don't want Trump, as he goes and tries to coalesce the Republican Party around him, I don't want him to buy into all of the junk they're going to try to tell him. Just today, this morning, I saw pundit after pundit from the RNC saying that Trump shouldn't deal with this issue. He needs to deal with the economy. Look, this if, if you know the Clintons as I do. The only way to beat him is going after him. You bet. They're going to come after Trump. They're not going. They're going to spend 70, 60 to seventy percent of their campaign one billion dollars on trashing Donald Trump. They want him to lower his defenses. Yep. Now, if you can be restricted, Donald Trump, from what you can say back about the Clintons, then you're beat. Don't well, uh, let me just tell you, he's now, he's now the. I mean, folks are excited. He's going with the advice because it's his own view. The gloves are off. Well, he needs to keep the gloves off. And I'll tell you something else that's going to come out in the next week. Something's going to come out about the death of Vince Foster having to do with the fact that, that there was no blood found at the scene. There were his skull, obviously, I don't want to be gross, but anyway, because of the wound, there should have been bullet, a bullet and pieces of skull laying at the crime scene, yet they found Sure, his no brains blood. weren't blown out there. He'd been moved there. That's and we're right. going to talk about that. Obviously, Trump's talking to the Inquirer, too. You've been talking to him. So he knows mm -hmm. it's coming out next week. He wants to be, he loves to be shown to be right. So he obviously understands this big expose is coming out, too. Everything Trump says, I assure you, there will be a collateral story that comes out to support what he says. And it will be true. It will be backed up. And what's neat about this, Alex, people can discredit me. That's fine. Call me in that case. That's fine. What is coming out about Vince Foster are the true relative facts from the investigation, not from me. For example, soon to come out will be the actual autopsy report, Alex. Now, you tell me. How does a man walk 200 yards in 90 plus degree temperature on a dirt trail, get to the site, sit down, and let me ask you this, how do you do that and not have one microscopic speck of dust on your shoes, socks, or pants? How? You roll them up in the carpet. <laughs> well, there's the other part. What he did have on his pants were long, shag, multicolored carpet fibers. And that was all over him. 